Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar titled Cryptography. Is the quantum apocalypse inevitable? My name is Stefan Chevaux, product manager at Advenica. Without further delay, let's look at our agenda for today. First, I'm going to talk about cryptography at a glance, then quantum computing, a short overview. Then I'm going to raise the question, quantum apocalypse, is it inevitable? And then what we can do about it? Cryptography has its roots in the Greek cryptus and graphium, literally translated to the study of secret writing. Ever since its inception, encryption has been kind of an arms race. Each time a more complex encryption has been developed, it has been attacked and sometimes broken. Each time in response, cryptographers have produced tougher and tougher encryption algorithms. The Caesar cipher was used by the Roman Empire. They had a challenge when the emperor needed to send information, instruction to his generals. The information needed to be protected even if the messenger was captured by the enemy. The Caesar cipher was the first cipher used in this context to protect military information. Let's fast forward in time. The German Enigma machine was used during the Second World War by the Nazis to protect, among other things, German naval information. Broken by Alan Turing and his invention, the electromechanical machine that searches through permutation. By the end of the war, the British were able to read daily German naval uh, enigma traffic. Rigging the Enigma machine shortened the war but as, but, uh, by as much as two years and saving millions of lives. Using a cipher and performing the process of encryption, information is scrambled and transformed from plain text into ciphertext, that is, information is made secret. Decryption turns scrambled and unreadable ciphertext back into plain text. In both encryption and decryption, the so-called encryption key controls the ability to hide and reveal information. The same key is used for encryption and decryption. The main challenge is how to distribute the key in a secure way. The most widely used public key encryption algorithm also called a symmetric algorithm, the RSA was published in 1978. The basis of security of the algorithm is the practical difficulty of the factorization of the product of two large prime numbers, that is, the factoring problem. An interesting fact, Clifford Cox, an English mathematician working for the British Intelligence Agency, had developed an equivalent system already in 1973, that is, five years before the popular RSA algorithm. However, it was classified until 1997. In asymmetric algorithms, two keys are used, a public and a private one. The public key is available for everyone, while the private key is kept secret and known only by the user. When the message is encrypted with the public key, only the corresponding private key can be used for decryption. The general problem with asymmetric algorithm is the performance. They are quite slow compared to symmetric algorithms. Can an asymmetric algorithm such as an RSA solve the problem of secure key distribution? Well, yes, it can. For example, when Alice wants to distribute a symmetric key to Bob, she takes Bob's public key and uses it to encrypt the symmetric key. Only Bob can decrypt the encrypted symmetric key because he is the only one who knows the corresponding private key. Asymmetric algorithms are perfect for solving the problem of secure key distribution. In fact, today asymmetric algorithms are widely used to secure Securely distribute symmetric keys. Once secure key distribution, once secure key distribution is achieved, Alice and Bob can use a symmetric algorithm, such as the AES, and symmetric key to make 
the communication confidential. In practice, cryptography combining security protocols are the very essence of modern secure communication. Cryptography facilitates data confidentiality, data integrity, authentication. With other words, sensitive information is kept secret, information is protected against modification, communicating parties are who they claim to be. Should cryptography fail, all sensitive information ever sent over public channels become readable to everybody with capability to passively intercept and record the information. Digital communication today is synonymous with the Internet. So why do we need encryption today? Well, by design, the Internet is an open network which facilitates the flow of information between attached devices. Scientists who designed the Internet focused on the technical challenges of moving information quickly and reliably. Security was an oxymoron. All information transfers including electronic mail or voice over IP, travel openly over the Internet and can be monitored and manipulated by others. The solution to the issue is encryption. However, when encryption fails, all information ever sent over the Internet becomes readable to everybody with capability to passively intercept and record the information. Quantum computers are devices that process information using physical phenomena unique to quantum mechanics, obeying the law of quantum mechanics. In classical computer, the basic unit of information is the bit, which is a two-state device that can represent the values 0 and 1. In quantum computing, the fundamental unit, a qubit, can hold both a zero and the one value at the same time. This is known as superposition of two states. Exploring this fact that the qubit can exist in multiple states simultaneously, the quantum computer with a single quantum processor is able to perform multiple computations. This is known as a quantum parallelism and is the key property in the power of quantum computers. It gives quantum computers the advantage over classical computers in that they can perform very rapid parallel computations without the need of having several processors linked together. Thus, a quantum computer is able to solve certain problems like searching and factoring much faster than it would take a classical computer to solve the same problem. Algorithms that exploit the quantum effects, such as superposition, are known as quantum algorithms. The most well-known quantum algorithms are the Shor's algorithm and the Groove's algorithms. The Shor's algorithm for factoring runs exponentially faster with respect to many, any known classical computation, while the Groove's algorithms for searches for example, searching unstructured databases, runs quadratically faster than the best possible classical algorithm for the same task. The widely used asymmetric cryptography relies on the assumption that prime factorization of large numbers takes extremely long time to solve and thus it would take very, very long time for information to be decrypted. However, this assumption is challenged by the speed of the Shor's algorithm. In summary, Shor's and Groove's algorithms threaten many widely used crypto systems that base their security on the premises that certain computational problems are extremely difficult to solve. The quantum algorithms can solve this classes of problems quickly enough to jeopardize the security of information that is protected by cryptography. Quantum computers are able to quickly reverse calculate the private keys 
a task that is considered impossible for a conventional computer. By breaking the cryptographic keys, an eavesdropper is able to decrypt private communications and pretend to be someone who they are not. In essence, quantum computing compromises the very principle of secure communication, that is, confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. The most popular asymmetric algorithms have been demonstrated to be insecure in the presence of quantum computers. Everything transmitted over public communication networks is vulnerable to both eavesdropping and modifications. These issues do not only impact information encrypted in this manner in the future, they also apply to information already transmitted over a public network. For organizations and institutions with interest in keeping secret information safe from the attackers, it is absolutely essential to be forward-thinking when it comes to information security. This involves considering how long information needs to stay secure. Organizations need to have a very clear view on the practical consequences of certain category of information becoming public knowledge long before it was originally intended to do. Fortunately, not all of cryptographic keys are breakable by quantum computers. Moreover, symmetric cryptographic algorithms in use today are perfectly safe to use. The most widely used asymmetric cipher, the AS, is one of the ciphers considered quantum safe. A quantum attack merely weakens AS by reducing the key size, in contrast to asymmetric ciphers whose keys are completely compromised. Furthermore, the AS adapts to quantum attacks by increasing its key size to rectify the threat introduced by quantum computing. Quantum key distribution is a method used in order to produce a perfectly random key which is shared by a sender, let's say Alice, and the receiver, let's call it Bob, while making sure that the nobody else has a chance to learn about the key, that is, by eavesdropping the communication channels used during the, the process. The security of quantum key distribution relies on a fundamental characteristic of quantum mechanics. The act of measuring a quantum system disturbs the system. This is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. However, there are limitations with quantum key distribution, such as lack of authentication in order to prevent man-in-the-middle attack. Also the distance limitation. Currently there is a limitation of 250 kilometers, since quantum repeaters do not currently exist. The obvious question is, is it at all possible today to realize truly future-proof secure communication. In practice, future-proof implies quantum resistance. Symmetric cryptographic algorithms possess this particular property. Thus the question is if symmetric algorithms can be used for secure key distribution. Suppose that Bob and Alice want to communicate using symmetric cryptography. They have never met and thus have not established a shared secret key in advance. How can they agree on a secret key? A solution is to use a trusted key distribution center. The key distribution center is a server that shares a different symmetric key with every user. The key distribution center knows the secret key of each user and each user can communicate securely with the key distribution center using this key. When Alice and Bob are users of the key distribution center, they only know their own individual key. Let's call them K Alice and K Bob.
Use the key K Alice to encrypt her communication with the key distribution center. Alice sends a message to the key distribution center saying she wants to communicate with Bob. The key distribution center, knowing the key K Alice, decrypts the message. The key distribution center then authenticates Alice and then generates a session key. Let's call it SK. This is the shared key that Alice and Bob can use to perform symmetric encryption. As the name implies, Alice and Bob will use this key for only this one session. The key distribution center now needs to inform Alice and Bob of the session key. The key distribution center thus sends back an encrypted message to Alice containing the session key. In reality, the message is also the message also contains the session key encrypted with Bob's key, KBob. Once Alice receives the message from the key distribution center, she extracts the session key from the message. Now she knows the one-time session key SK. Alice also extracts the session key encrypted with Bob's key and forwards it to Bob. He decrypts the received message using the key K Bob. Now Bob also knows the one time session key SK. Since both Alice and Bob have the same session key, they can use it for secure communication protected by a symmetric encryption algorithm. Of course, this method is a grossly simplified in order to highlight the very core essence with the key distribution center and that is, secure key distribution can be realized with symmetric encryption algorithms. Are there any other options? There are cryptographic algorithms that are thought to be secure against an attack by a quantum computer. Quantum resistant algorithms include lattice-based, supersingular elliptic curves, code-based and multivariate algorithms. However, it seems improbable that any of the currently known algorithms can serve as a drop-in replacement for what is in use today. One challenge that needs to be overcome is the larger key sizes than the algorithms that they will replace. This may result in needing to change various internet protocols such as the transport layer security protocol or the internet key exchange protocol. None of these algorithms have been shown to guarantee security against all quantum attacks. A new quantum algorithm may be discovered which breaks some of these algorithms. However, this is similar to the state today. Although most public key crypto systems come with a security proof, these proofs are based upon unproven assumptions. Thus, the lack of known attacks is used to justify the security of public key cryptographic currently in use. In summary, is the quantum apocalypse inevitable? Yes, it is. Is there anything we can do about it? Well, yes, it is. When do we need to worry? Well, it depends on several factors. For example, how long do you need to keep your secrets secure? Let's say you need to keep them for X years. How much time will it take to retool the existing infrastructure? Let's say it will take Y years. How long will it take for a large-scale quantum computer to be built? Let's say it takes Z years. Now give it some time frame and then look at the theorem which states that if x plus y is greater than z then you need to worry right now. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any further questions don't hesitate to contact me by mail.